Welcome, in this video we are going to implement a great uh, network in network paper. Um, it is often taught as the paper that introduced one by one convolution, or at least it's a paper that gave uh, a, nice, uh, uh, a nice intuition on, on why you want to use one one by one convolution, or, or maybe that gives some, uh, some foundation of it. Um, yeah, so I think that's a very nice uh, paper uh, that, that most, uh, I, I really recommend uh, ML practitioner to ever read at it. So I really uh, invite you to read the paper uh, on, uh, as always in that video, we're going to focus on the implementation. Um, so yeah, these are the results we'll get by the end of this video. So uh, basically we'll get a test error that is on par with what is reported in the paper. So in the paper, they report a test error of uh, 0.47%. And you can see that uh, over the last epoch, uh, or at the last epoch, we are very close to that number. Um, so yeah, this is the test error over the last epoch of training. So let's dive directly into the implementation. Uh, as usual, we'll use PyTorch for, for implementing uh, everything uh, ML related, and we'll use a few other packages uh, to, uh, to help us uh, to implement some helpers or to help us with loading and plotting the data. So let's dive into the, the implementation. We can start by loading the data using the Keras uh, package, uh, and then we can normalize the data. Uh, so we're going to use the MNIST data, 28 by 28 images, grayscale, uh, and we're going to normalize them between minus one and one. Um, then we can move on to what is really interesting, the network in network uh, uh, architecture. So basically we're going to use this uh, to implement figure two from the paper. So basically this is the uh, overall neural network architecture and we're going to implement that directly. So basically uh, the idea of the paper is to replace uh, convolution. So this is a standard convolution where a given pixel uh, we apply a, a pixel a, a kernel on the uh, the pixel on its neighbors, uh, um, and then that uh, there is some convolution on the, that produce a value for that pixel. Here the idea is instead of uh, applying a convolution, the idea is, is to use a, a, a neural network. That, that's why they call it network in network. So basically, the idea is to use. Um, I'm not, not sure if there's a, 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 a special name for that. But okay, they just said they use a MLP. So for a given pixel, they will take the neighbor of that pixel, uh, consider that as input to the MLP, and then apply your MLP. Uh, on that, it will give you uh, your, uh, after uh, a few layers, uh, that, that will give you your, your final output. Uh, and that's the idea behind this paper. And actually, you can implement all that with convolutions, or at least with one by one convolutions. Uh, and uh, yeah, so every time you use one by one convolutions, you can come back to that paper on uh, thinking about that as the foundation of it, and that gives also some understanding on why this is helpful, uh, on why that helps in some context, for example, sometimes to, to get more details uh, for some uh, image generation tasks. Um, but okay, let's dive into the implement, uh, let's go back to implementation. We can create the, the class called the, the, uh, the constructor of the superclass and then move on in implementing the first block of the architecture. So basically, this is um, the figure two. Basically, we've just implemented that part. So let's see a bit what's happening. So first, with our uh, input image, the first thing to do is to apply, uh, here we've looked at a single pixel. So basically, we will map, um, or maybe more generally speaking, we will, uh, from that image, we'll create a feature map. Um, and for that, to produce that feature map, so for each pixel, we'll apply a convolution, uh, yeah, to get, uh, to, to, yeah, to map that uh, the, the pixel on its neighbor uh, into a value. Uh, so we we do that we, by using a, a, a convolution that maps one channel because we are using cool scale images to 96 channels. We're using a, a kernel size of five, a padding of two, which means that this convolution will not uh, the feature map that is outputted by this convolution will have the same size as the input image, at least in terms of the spatial dimension. The number of channels will, will uh, be expanded, of course. Uh, we'll use some uh, special normalization. We'll use a normal distribution with some sort of deviation. Um, so that's really the first part. We apply a convolution to a given, uh, uh, to, to a given uh, input, uh, uh, input pixel. Um, so basically, this is kind of applying a MLP uh, to the pixel on its uh, neighborhood. So for example, if, if we are using a, a kernel size of five, this is if, as if we had this input, um, we had input 25 
25 inputs, 25 units, and then we are uh, for each uh, uh, each of those 25 values are uh, mapped to a single value. Um, well, not one value to 96 values. So this is what you can see here. So for one pixel, one pixel on these neighborhoods are mapped to 96 uh, values. These are the channels. Uh, and then these 96 values need to ma be mapped to some other hidden units. Uh, and basically to do that, you can again use a, uh, a one by one convolution to do that. Um, so basically this is the CCP1 uh, convolution. We are going from 96 uh, hidden units to 64. Uh, so again, we could apply that with MLP that we apply in parallel to each uh, to each pixel, but it's uh, basically this operation is already done in, in uh, uh, Conf2D from PyTorch and it's already super optimized. So let's use that instead. But you can do the math, so you can try to uh, to implement the, the uh, directly the MLP on your side on uh, on make sure that. Uh, uh, set the weights of your own implementation to be the same of that convolution and you will see that the result is the same uh, yeah and again we're using the same initialization as before and once we have those hidden units we can uh, produce we can add the, the last uh, hidden unit so we've uh, implemented the first one the second one and then we can uh, implement this last one the short one we can go from 64 uh, hidden units uh, to 48 and therefore that will produce this feature map um, so this one have, have the exact same shape as the uh, input image because the first convolution did not change the, uh, the, the spatial dimension on the one by one convolution neither uh, because they only uh, change the channels, the number of channels and not the spatial dimension. But then, um, okay, that will be implemented later on, but basically here what we'll do, we'll apply a, a pooling layer, we'll uh, add some pooling, I think it's max pooling. Uh, to reduce the spatial dimension from 28 to uh, 14, we'll divide by two the, spe the spatial um, the spatial dimension. But uh, before doing that, let's maybe implement the second block. So basically, uh, this is this block. So again, we can do ex exactly the same thing. First, a convolution with a kernel size of five. Uh, we use a padding of two so that the, sp the spatial dimension will not be changed. Uh, and then um, CCP3 uh, and also CCP4 uh, to uh, finalize that block. Um, yeah, so it would have been better to look like this. Uh, so this is um, yeah, this is one block on this is the last block. So again, a convolution, uh, one by one convolution on a one by one convolution. So for now, we've implemented all uh, all that first part of the network. Uh, maybe what we can do, we can put all that in a sequential layer so that uh, if we smear one input to the network, it can be uh, easily passed from one layer to the other. Let's not forget to add the, the activation function. On as I was mentioning, we are going to use ma uh, max pooling in between layers. So uh, in the way they are implemented or with the parameters given, those max pooling will uh, perform a done sampling operation um, yeah, using the max pooling uh, operator on where you're also using a dropout uh, after those uh, pooling operation. And basically what we do at the very last, uh, this for the very last, uh, Layer, and this is also something that was introduced in that paper. Um, basically, we have uh, a given number of channels, so we have uh, 10 channels. Uh, let me think about that. Okay, yeah, so basically, we have uh, 10 channels uh, on each, uh, but the spatial resolution is higher than, uh, than one. So basically, here we have 28 by 28, here we have uh, 14 by 14 in terms of, sp of spatial resolution. You have seven by seven. This um, th this this block does not uh, move, uh, does not uh, alter the spatial resolution. So here we have a spatial resolution of seven by seven. And therefore, here each uh, basically each uh, feature map you see here is basically represent one uh, represent one class. Uh, and basically, we will apply uh, uh, an average pooling la layer on each uh, feature map. To get one uh, class, so for example, here we have ten uh, plan. You can see like that. On each plane will be uh, our, there will be an average pooling to get uh, one class probabilities. Um, yeah, on the, then once this is done, we can uh, uh, create our activation function. We're going to use the logs of max, and then we can uh, implement the fraud function uh, to uh, yeah to tell basically our uh, input will be uh, processed by the neural network. 
So the first thing is to um, send the input to the model. Um, the model, because it's uh, uh, we we've used uh, convolutions, the output will be uh, 4D. We want to uh, to map that to 2D. So basically, we'll uh, do some squeezing because the last uh, dimension are one uh, in the way we've implemented the, the paper. So basically, after those operations, the size will be 1,10, uh, and then we can apply uh, the well batch size, 1,10. Then we can apply the log softmax to the uh, output log probabilities that are normalized to normalize them, and then we can return the log probability uh, that can be used in the loss. Once this is done, we've done most of the work. We can implement the training function. That's basically just supervised learning. So we can uh, prepare the, uh, for example, some uh, variable to store the testing accuracy over, uh, over time during training and to plot it at every end. Again, we're not going to use it uh, to do any overstopping or anything. We should not use the, the testing accuracy during training. Um, but in the paper, what they do is they, uh, they stop training. Well, basically, they, uh, when the uh, training accuracy does not improve, they decay the learning rate. Uh, and when the learning rate is uh, is reach uh, 1% of its initial value, they stop training. So basically that's what we've implemented in that condition. Because the learning rates are very, very low, uh, sometimes this condition, uh, it's not triggered when the learning rate uh, reaches 1% of its initial value because there is some numerical instability and that's why we had this, uh, uh, this epsilon value. So once we've done that, we can sample a batch of data points. So let's sample some uh, pointers uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, some indices, some pointers to, to the training data, uh, and then we can uh, iterate um, iterate over those uh, those pointers, sample x and y, so the input and the output of the neural network. We can uh, compute the log probabilities by sending the input to the neural network. Then we can compute the loss. Basically, we're going to use the uh, um, uh, negative log likelihood loss, uh, and then we can uh, do one gradient step. Uh, to uh, update the parameters of the neural network. Uh, then we can compute the uh, training accuracy uh, on uh, basically on, on uh, we'll, we'll compute the training accuracy over the full batch. So we increase it to zero and then we always add the uh, the mean uh, for that uh, uh, for that given uh, uh, for that given iteration. Uh, and at the very end of that uh, that epoch, we can uh, do one step of uh, we can call the scheduler, tell the scheduler the current training accuracy, so that the scheduler will uh, decay the learning rate uh, once uh, once the uh, training accuracy does not improve. And then we can do the testing. Again, the testing is just for us; it's just for visualization to see the uh, all testing uh, did during uh, during during training, and so that we can plot the loss. Uh, usually, you will rather save checkpoints and do that at a, uh, after training, but uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, finally, we can return it so that we can plot it. Uh, and therefore, now we can move on to putting all the blocks together. We can create the uh, network network uh, model. We can uh, instantiate the loss function, the optimizer. We're going to use uh, SGD. We can create a, a scheduler. We're going to use reduce on plateau. Let's be careful that if we want to. Uh, to, to, to kick off the uh, scheduler when the, basically the objective here is to maximize the uh, training accuracy. So uh, here do not forget to use max instead of min. Uh, and then we can call the training function with all those variables. Uh, and then we can plot the testing accuracy. Um, yeah, or, or you can just compute the test errors from the testing accuracy. Uh, they use, uh, the, the reported result from the paper is uh, 0 0.47. So that's why I've centered the plot around that value. Um, so yeah, please uh, ever, ever, ever read out the paper, ever uh, play with that code, and I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, please leave a thumbs up. It uh, helps uh, YouTube understand that this is great content, uh, and also uh, subscribe for more videos related to machine learning, mainly uh, nerve and diffusion models. Thank you.